welcome to Wally Bras Toolbox Sunday and today I got a, well not today, yesterday I got a delivery. I got a delivery of this and this is or should be a digital angle finder. Now brands like Wixi um, make these things, you know, ten a penny really, they're, they're quite a few of them floating about but they are made under or badged under lots of different names and uh, some of them are very similar to each other, some are obviously different. But this one I found is, is seems unique. It's the only one I've seen like it. And um, so I bought it, and it was cheap. It was only about 20 euros, so I thought, okay, I'll have that, because I've got a specific need for one of these, or I think I have. And um, these are quite good for setting the angle of a table, saw table, or a angle of the blade, you know, band saws, etc., etc. Or the spindle, if you've got a compound spindle moulder, you know, any angles. So, or even finding out what an angle is, such as a rafter. So, I bought one anyway. So let's have a look. It says made in China, surprise, surprise. So I'm going to get that out of there. And it comes in a little pouch, a set of, little set of batteries, which I imagine I'm going to need them. So I'll take them out of there quickly, because obviously I want to be able to demonstrate this. A bit more, it's just <laughs> the size of that. <laughs> that is there for a reason. It's not a Robert Sorby one, lovely old tool. Yeah, yeah. Could you put the ladder on the highest that we're going for? Okay, can, can I have a couple minutes? All right, done. Can I have a couple minutes? Oh, she's gonna make a coffee, right. Apparently I've got to set the ladder for my missus because she doesn't feel safe. Shall I, shall I set the ladder for the missus? Or shall I check my insurance? Hmm. Hmm, sorry. <sighs> I'm in a bit of a dream world there. Okay, well I've got my um, little digital angle finder and I've got to get that out of the box or the back pouch that it comes in. And first impressions, it looks pretty solid. And the actual battery cover on the back has a screw, so it's some sort of child lock screw. But it does feel really solid, this particular one. Now, most of the ones I've seen are like some sort of uh, metal car, no, not metal casting, but some sort of metal and a bit of plastic and stuff like that. They all look a bit cheap, but this actually feels pretty substantial, I have to admit. And it should be magnetic, so let's see. And so it is. So that could be very, very useful. So let's put batteries in it, shall we? And in this drawer down here, I should have a screwdriver. Maybe that one will fit. It is, yep, it is. It's a PH1. So, unscrewed that, probably lost the screw, no, there it is. I can plonk the batteries in, see what happens. Hopefully it works. Be a bit embarrassing if it doesn't, wouldn't it? There you go, that's on there like so. And, okay, so what we got? We've got batteries in it. I imagine that's the power button, that looks like a power sort of standby button. So it's, oh, oh, error, what's that mean? Ah, because also the zero, oh, zero. So I imagine we have to put it onto there, and we zero on there, so it sets the level. Okay, so that's set on there, like so. Ain't quite zeroed, but there's a minuscule difference. So then what we can do is we can grab, let's say for instance, this is our tabletop. You know, our cast iron tabletop. It's not a table saw, that is. And, uh, we want to set the angle of the blade. Well, if we're doing setting an angle of the blade, you wouldn't put it on the top. What you do is you put it on the blade itself. Because if most um, table saws these days have a, a spindle and motor that alters. Well, I can show you that in a second. Let's put that on there, and that's quite magnetic actually, quite surprisingly magnetic, it's quite strong. So if I change the angle there, I can't see it, oh yes I can. Excuse me, I'm looking in the, the monitor. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that pairs to, work, to be doing the job. The main reason I bought this it really is so I can actually work out the angle of my chisels, my grind, my primary grind on my chisels. But, um, but also for setting obviously the angles on the table saw and stuff like that but mainly for sharpening. So you might ask yourself, why would you use one of these for sharpening? 
Woodworking channel, why boy? The place where you'll learn woodworking tips and tricks. And if you'd be most kind, hammer that subscribe button. Anyway, it's time to get back to the video. Now it's quite simple really, because this device will attach itself to anything that is metal and tell you what the angle is. Needless to say, you have to calibrate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to demonstrate how we do this. So let's say, for instance, we're using an oil stone, for instance, like this one here. Maybe you won't be. Maybe you'll be using diamond. Maybe you'll be using something totally different. We put that out on there, but we have to zero it. So I've zeroed it now to my oil stone, but I'm going to use this as a way of actually setting the angle of my plain iron's primary grind. So. To test it, what I'm going to use is one of these little do freeze if you're using a sharpening guide like so. But let's get the plane iron out of the uh, Stanley Bailey number seven joint of plane. And this is a Victor hand forged plane iron, which are very, very good. But I want to just make sure that I've actually been grinding it to the correct angle. It actually needs a sharpen anyway, to be honest. So it doesn't look like it is, personally. It looks like I've been getting a little bit carried away with it. So I've been freehanding too much. So this would, wouldn't have been moved. The plate, this, this oil stone shouldn't be moved by the time you've actually calibrated it. So if you do move it, you want to calibrate it again. So all you have to do is place the plane eye until the flat of the grind is on the flat of the oil stone. Which you probably can't see very well on there, but it, but it is. So take my word for it, okay? So I've got that onto the flat of the oil stone. So I can tighten this up on the side here now. So it's a good way of setting your actual sharpening guide or honing guide. And now we're going to place this onto there. Now it should be 30 degrees. Now I can't see that, so is it 30 degrees? Oh no, that's, that's way too low. So I've got that set at the moment at 2301. Now, although it isn't too bad, it's because it's a really hard um, steel. But that is a little bit on the low side, to be absolutely honest, which makes your edge weak. It should be around 28, 30 degrees, really. And it's near 23. So this is a good way of checking that you've, you know, you've done something right regarding your primary grind. What is a good idea, once you've worked out what the angle should be and what position your plain iron is in to respect of your honing guide, you can actually make yourself a board with some stops on, which you can push the blade up against, but this then push up against the board. So if you imagine this was your stop, I won't make one there, don't I really? This is your stop. You can then position your honing guide up against the side of your bench like this, or the board you've got your stop mounted onto, and literally just place the um, position the plane iron in the honing guide until it meets that stop. So you could make yourself one for each individual tool that you got. You might find that some of your tools will require exactly the same depth, so this, this won't be an issue. But generally it should be the case. Um, but remember you can't swap over from one honing guide to another because they could be slightly different size. So that, that, that is a technique that might be useful to you. But anyway this is how you can use your digital angle finder for setting your angle on your plain iron and this is way too low so I'm glad I've checked it but I won't do anything about it at the moment what I'll do is I'll correct it as I sharpen it so I'll stop sharpening it at such a crazy low angle and do it nearer to 26 to 28 degrees if you have the um, the thinner plain irons these are three more thick these victors if you've got like the standard Stanley um, plain iron, you don't want to go below 28 degrees because the edge will be too weak because the steel can't really cope with it, to be honest. Um, this is a little bit different. It's a little bit stronger. Anyway, I hope you liked my little video on how to use a digital angle finder for setting the primary grind on your plain irons. And uh, if you'd be most kind, you can give us a little like and subscribe and maybe press the little bell icon because then you'll get a warm fuzzy feeling in your pocket every time we upload a new woodworking video. And I know you'd be excited about that. Mm.
do. I suppose a bit of sort this out now. Who turned the lights out? to get to the end of my video. Well, either I must have grabbed your attention or you just couldn't be bothered to click off. If you'd be most kind and subscribe and maybe click the little bell icon because then you'll get a notification every time I upload a new woodworking video. And I know you'd be excited about that. So, hammer that like button, hammer that subscribe button and comment below 